If you're a content creator, I'll ask you to join me as I practice how to use these to color grade. So let's get into it. It's been a long time coming. I've been trying to make the switch from Premiere Pro to DaVinci Resolve. Two great editing softwares for content creators and filmmakers, if you ask me. But Resolve finally got me. Yeah. First, I'm using the EOS R6 Canon camera. I shot the video in log three and to a great extent, Resolve is for free. Unless of course you want the extra features built into it for professional color grading and video editing. Let's quickly run through my camera settings here. I try to get it right in camera first for best result in post. You want to do the same. So I advise that you don't skip. Every aspect of this practice video is very key to achieving the best result. To get the most out of any camera, you want to shoot in manual mode and it needs log settings. But what does that even mean? Log 3 just simply means a profile that you apply when you're shooting your video to make the camera capture more details. I toggle the dial on the camera to switch to video mode. I hit the menu button and go to the first page which is red. Next. I move to movie size which is 4K at 24 frames per second is great for cinematic quality. I choose IPB format. Well, this drops the quality just by a tiny fraction. You might not even notice it. Plus, it saves me a ton in storage. Then I move to page 3. I set white balance to custom. This is very important. If not done correctly, the camera won't capture colors accurately and trying to fix it in post can be a lot of headaches. There is a detailed white balance video up in the cart or down in the description. After that, scroll down to Canon log settings. Turn on log and choose log 3. Next, while still in Canon log settings, I'll go down to color space and choose cinema gamut. Take note of this. I will need this information when it's time to do the color grading. For this shoot, I am using 15mm lens with f-stop set to 3.5 because I want to reduce the compression in my depth of feed aka blurry background. Native ISO for C-Log3 is 800. However, I am overexposing it by two stops which is 1000 for proper exposure just testing it. Since I am shooting 24 frames per second, I want to double that frame rate. The double of 24 will probably be 48. The closest proximity here is 50, so 60 frames per second. I'm going to double that to be 120 or 125. So you might want to take note of that, you know, just in case you're practicing on your own so that you know how to adjust that in camera. So this is the camera settings that I am using for this project and then I hope you followed. All right, let's move on to the next thing. So my shoot is done. I have my clips loaded up on my timeline. I'll quickly switch to color page here for color grading. It is important to switch to this tool right here where I can monitor my exposure. I will first of all set up the first node and label it CST which stands for color space transform. You remember when I told you that I will choose Canon so Cinema I Gamma Canon when I was doing my settings. Now I'm going to have to activate that settings here. I'll go ahead and pick color space transform and drop it in the node. After which I'll select Canon Cinema Gamut for input color space. I'll pick Canon Log 3 for input gamma. Then I'll put Rec 709 on output color space and then output gamma would be timeline. These settings that I'm using and activating in DaVinci Resolve are peculiar to Canon cameras. So whatever camera you use, you'll have to put in that research to find what's ideal for your camera and its settings. So. As you can see, it's already looking good in my opinion. I am now going to start setting up more nodes. 
for gamut mapping method i think i will set it to saturation and then for tone mapping i would leave it at davinci like that so quickly let's set up another node i'll label it as exposure i need to start working on the exposure now so i will set up this node on this extreme bottom of the screen is lift and lift simply just affects the shadow if you look at the waveform right here i want to make sure that the waveform doesn't hit the bottoms because if it hits the bottom it means that i'm losing details in my shadows and if it hits the top it means that i'm going to be clipping in the highlights So we set up another, a third node, and this node I will call a contrast. Now, I make sure I watch the image and so it's not too bright. So I don't do too much on contrast. I just uh, push it a little bit so that I don't look like baked potato. That will be enough for contrast. And then I'll come down here and uh, reduce the highlight a little bit. Gain is for highlight. And so I'm doing this, I am looking at my waveform to make sure that the waveform looks good. I'll add another node again. I'll call this saturation. I'll come down here and increase it just a little bit, you know, so I am not um, too saturated. So basically, so far, so good. And this is where I have it. Let's toggle it and turn it on and off. You know, as you can see, we've come a long way already. Basically, I will come down here. I'll start dialing in the look that I really like. Like they like to call it teal and orange, but I'm going to make mine look a little bit like grayish blue. So that's the one I like. Let's quickly see it here. So far, I enlarged the screen so that I can look at the detailing of my video here. Let's move on to the next thing. So I'm going to be using the RGB curve right here. I'll add another node first and I'll call this one skin. This is where I begin to qualify the skin. The skin, I'll select the skin and qualify it by clicking on this eyedropper tool here but first i will change to vectorscope which is what i need for skin so but you want to show skin tone indicator the line in between there that's where our skin indicator is supposed to fall i pick on this eyedropper tool select my skin and then press shift h to highlight it you know, this place can, this particular one can be very tricky. Sometimes with one click of the eyedropper tool on the skin, you are able to completely select it. Some other time, you just have to try and making sure that you are able to dial in. For the sake of time, I might hasten this part up. As you can see, I also use the slider here to fine tune my skin selection. And then I If you notice, I have actually used some of this feather here on the the matte fitness to to fine tune my selection. So, I think I am pretty much satisfied with that selection. Let me quickly explain my understanding of what the vectorscope is. Because the vectorscope is very key to me being able to accurately dial in all the settings for my skin tone to be correct. Basically on the vectorscope you have one, two, three, four, five, six spots here. 
you have the yellow magenta blue cyan green and then you have the yellow so where the skin tone line lies the straight line is the correctness of the skin tone so that spot right there has to align with the skin tone line for the skin tone to be accurate so as of now my alignment is a little bit off to the side of the yellow the aim and purpose for me right now is to align that spot with the skin tone line if that makes any sense before i do that i am going to switch to the log button here that's where i'm going to be to actually correct the skin tone and make sure that spot comes to alignment and slightly adjust the offset till i am in line with the skin tone line then i try to sometimes to apply some of the me tones me tone in that line you know i push it up the line so i think i'm pretty much satisfied with how it looks right now i will press shift and h on my keyboard to turn off the selection before and after it does look like there are just slight changes to the colors but it makes a world of a difference to be able to accurately nail that skin tone so now that i have corrected the skin i'll switch back to the waveform um, I quickly want to actually turn off log and switch back to the tab, the color tab where I was before I switched to log. And let's quickly uh, turn on the selection on the skin so quickly. And then I will reduce the exposure of my skin because I thought that it was too bright. So this is before and after, and it looks good to me. Let's go to the next level. Toggle off and on. So next I'll create another node and I'll call this node blue. And um, we're going to create that uh, orange and teal look in a second. But I'm not going to make mine orange and teal. I'm going to add a little spin. We add another node and I'll call this bypass. So that's where I create my bypass from whatever bluish uh, tint I create for the background. It's going to probably show on my skin and I'm going to bypass and connect the skin directly to the bypass node. And that's the intention. So I'll quickly switch. Okay, so what I'm going to do with the RGB curve is to first and foremost click on the chin icon or I'm going to be adjusting the settings to individual channel, that's RGB. But unfortunately, it looks like this thing is not working right now because um, I have created the bypass node already, the parallel node that I just created at the bottom. I'll delete it and create another node real quick. I'll do the blue node first. I will pull down on the lower axis of this red channel and that's going to start introducing green to my background. As you can see, it already looks good. I will go to green channel increase the highlight on green and then pull back on on the lower axis go to blue and then increase blue on the lower axis uh, i'll just quickly adjust them a little bit if it looks good to me and then i let it be this is it in a nutshell i think i'm pretty satisfied with this thing you know you know now i'm going to create the last node which is my bypass node then i will take a strip from the square box from the skin node and connect it directly to the bypass node and what that does is that it just simply separates my skin from that blue effect that I added to the video and to give me that skin separation from the background. Sam here I hope you got some value from this video today if you did please follow for more and remember the best time to create is now until another video peace